What up, y'all? Day three. Three, day three. Uh, update. And uh, this should be a shorter one. <laughs> I know I always say that. <clears throat> but I'm a chatty dude. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Uh, play mats. Game board play mat. Uh, I am open to the idea of a print on demand. So I, uh, I will be investigating that. So I think because of the complications of minimum orders... This is a product that, sure, I can read 20 people are excited about it, but I don't know if that excitement goes past those 20 people. Um, so I am going to be investigating print-on-demand services, uh, and then that will just be sold through my web store because that will just be much easier um, to facilitate. So um, just be patient. Uh, I will work on that. I've already got emails on, in the in the verse. They're out. They're, they're doing their thing. So... Um, I'll get you an update on that once I know something. Uh, as you might have saw in yesterday's update, um, we have the live stream on the 19th with the Bonds, the Bondsinator. Um, really looking forward to that. She's a hoot. So uh, get your loosen up your shoulders, folks, and get those windmills ready because it's going to be a good time. And we're going to see we're going to see the expansion in all its glory. It's going to be on TTS. Obviously, we're not doing a physical. Of that um, but you can still see how those cards interact with everything so market calendars or go over to twitch and just go ahead and follow her so that you get that notification um, so something fun for tomorrow uh, I know I said we weren't gonna do any stretch goals uh, but you know we've got one we've got you a stretch goal coming tomorrow okay so um, it's stuff people have been asking for. I'm excited we were able to find a way to make this work. And we're going we're gonna to have a stretch goal. How about that? So be on the lookout for that tomorrow. going to drop that uh, into the update in the campaign tomorrow. Uh, there was a question. So I always like kind of scan the questions and see which ones pop up. And I've seen a question that popped up several times about the chips and the, and, and the stickers peeling. And... Um, are you know are you switching suppliers and so here's the thing um, with anything that we make with any manufacturer uh, there's always going to be some amount of defects right like it's it's not possible to have a perfect production run where every box has you know is is pristine and so no um, the the just so you know you may have read several people who had an issue with a chip but it wasn't over the amount that um, would be an issue. You know, it's not past the, an alarming rate. So, no, we're not changing uh, um, because then that creates lots of other issues. If, we, if you just swap suppliers because then you got to make molds again. And then, you know, is the material that the new place source is the same as the last? If it's different, then how is it different? It just, you know, no. So, uh, I have confidence in the supplier that we used. They... Yeah, I thought they did a pretty bang up job. Yep, there's going to be an issue here and there, but you know, we just try to get you a replacement for that. So, there you go. Uh, I've seen several people ask about the pledge manager. When is it opening? When is it closing? Um, so typically, so our our my method for pledge managers has always been. Oh, by the way, nightmare before Christmas shirt today because it's almost Halloween and Christmas. Um, so my approach on pledge managers is to open it. It's typically like two weeks ish after the campaign ends because we have to wait for Kickstarter to send us the backer report. We take the backer report; it gets uploaded into pledge manager. So whatever you've backed, the amount of money and um, the products that you wanted are preloaded into the pledge manager. Then we open that up for late pledges. We open that up for adjustments if you want to add anything uh, product wise. Once we have the shipping information and pricing and the VAT information, the tax information, all loaded into the pledge manager uh, and, and ready to go, there'll be an announcement about that later. So it's kind of like so you have these stages. Uh, pledge manager opens, right? So then you can go in there and you can confirm, yep, uh, I, I gave them this amount of money. The things that I wanted, they're all aligned properly. Good to go. Do I want to add anything else? Because whatever, you do pay for things at the time that you add them in Pledge Manager. It's not like a Kickstarter at the end. So then at some later point, we'll probably be like, I would just say, 
November, December. Like we're looking for a, a faster turnaround on this one because this is mostly a reprint. So the items are mostly ready to go. Uh, obviously other than the expansion, some of the add-ons. Uh, we will then at that point release everybody to come back in and pay for their shipping and their VAT and their taxes. So then that will be paid okay, and collected there. Uh, and then at some point when we're ready to actually just say, yep, everything's locked in, we're ready to start production, that's when we close the pledge manager. Like, no, you can't add anything to your order. You can't uh, adjust anything. You can always still update your shipping address um, until we lock that. that. But that won't lock until um, games are on boats and headed toward fulfillment, right? Like we keep that open as long as we can because we know life's weird and you have to move sometimes. But um, yeah, there will be a point we lock that down as well. And typically it's, it's about, it's usually about five, six weeks before we, we expect games to be on, you know, fulfillment trucks headed to your house. Um, so that's kind of the timeline of how that works. So, um, you know, there, overall, how, how long is it going to be open? So like say on Tidal Blades 2, like it's still open and we're actually prepping the, the shipping um, wait tables now. So those will go in soonish and be released and then we'll collect the money for shipping. Um, we're expecting production lockdown to probably be December, January for that. Um, it just really depends. Tidal Blades 2 is a little bit more difficult um, because like, so a project like Wonderland's War where the game is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of, it's, it's, it's locked in, you know, it's a game that you just play within the game. Whereas Tidal Blades 2 is a campaign. So once we get a physical prototype, uh, the pre-production copy, we actually need to play through the entire campaign to make sure nothing's missing, all the wording's right, there's not cards that are off, and we may still miss something uh, because mistakes happen. Um, but that process is probably going to take a little longer than what it would say like on say like Wonderland, Wonderland's War or like a Banner Festival where you play the game two or three times and you're like, we didn't see any issues, all the cards are doing what they're supposed to do, we've, we've checked the text. Uh, all the punch boards punched out correctly. The you know the components are doing what we imagined them to do. Whereas a campaign game, it's a little tougher because you know especially when there's like kind of choose your own adventure or there's things that you may or may not unlock on during your playthroughs. There may be components that you don't see. Um, so it's a bit more work, but um, you know that that'll be part. I know I'm explaining a different campaign during this campaign, uh, but that's that's just kind of how it works. So the pledge manager will probably, so like, again, that's what I was getting at. Tidal Blades 2's pledge manager has been open for months and months and months and months and uh, and still got a few months left to go. And Wonderland's War will have a much shorter turnaround um, because we're, you know, we're trying to get you the game in July. So I would say, I don't know, February is probably the latest it'll be open more than likely. Um, again, it all depends. We still do have to lock in and finalize the expansions, um, balancing and play testing, which will happen. You know, our, our current schedule, what we have planned is to have that done by the end of November. Um, but you know, things can come up during play testing. And so th that, that's the rub that we have as creators. We, we put out these estimates of when we're going to get you the game. We, we make a schedule. We make the schedule to get to that determination of what's going to get, you know, when we would be able to deliver. And that's just based on um, normal situations. And, and things should go as planned. But sometimes any, any of those things along the way can make things back up, right? And sometimes, and I kind of explained this in yesterday's video, and it applies here as well. There's a domino effect. So if that previous piece isn't ready to fall other things have to wait their turn and and sometimes other items can be still be worked on um while you know they're you're waiting on this other piece but sometimes everything has to wait on that previous piece to get finished so it really just depends um but here's the thing if we're during play testing we're like cool we've given ourselves to the end of november to get the play testing and balancing in place and finalize 
the files. Uh, if we, through playtesting, we come up, we come across an issue or it's the balancing isn't balancing the way we want or, you know, there's some sort of issue in the, in the, in the mechanic of the game. Um, we're not going to just go, well, we got it as good as we could because we set a deadline of the end of November and it's as best as it could be. Now, honestly, I think some people, I think some people do that. You know, uh, I'm not here to name names. That's not the point. Um, and I'd prefer you guys not be like, yeah, this campaign, it obviously did that. Um, but just know that the pressure that backers put on creators to get the game to them on time will make creators make, I don't want to say bad decisions, but short-sighted decisions. It's sh a short-sighted approach to pump a game out and meet your self-imposed deadline so that you do not get flack from backers about a late, you know, delivering late. Um, more so than it is to deliver a bad game or a broken game or a game that underperforms what you had hoped or promised it would do. So we're always going to take that time to, um, you know, put, put a game through its paces, uh, through playtesting, balancing, and then trying to test that pre-production copy because when I didn't do that in the past there's things that we would have seen had we done it that would have been easy fixes easy fixes uh, and then you end up you know delivering something that people are, are underwhelmed for or are is broken um, and you have to send out errata and and listen there's always going to be a typo in a rule book there's always going to and we listen we pay we pay people to come in and put their hands all over all these things. Outside eyes. You have to get outside eyes because uh, as a creator, as someone who works on a project for a long time, you you get so comfortable with it. There's things that you just miss, right? You just It's a warm blanket. You, don't, you just glaze over things um, because of your familiarity with, with your game and your, and your rule book and those things. So you need fresh eyes to come in. And I mean that as an editor's. So we have a rulebook editor who comes in and scans everything and makes suggestions and does typos and things like that, and they still miss things. Um, and then we also have the play testing where uh, we do get outside opinions, we get feedback from backers. Uh, that a lot of that is happening now in uh, uh, in the Druid City Games Discord. We also have a Discord specifically set up for Tidal Blades too because it was before I made a Discord for Druid City Games. Um, but that one is is you know. So we have those, and we, we kind of get... So if you're interested in any of that, you can always jump in and uh, play test some stuff for us. We're open to everybody doing that. Because uh, most of our playtests are going to be on TTS, so all you'll need to do is have the TTS platform on Steam, and then you'll have access to it. I do believe it's typically $20 for a tabletop simulator. Um, sometimes it goes on sale for $10. But you can also play a lot of other uh, board games through that app, and... It's the easiest one to get into, I think. It's not necessarily the most elegant, but it's the most e it's the easiest one to like. Everything's pretty, um, as you would imagine. The controls, right? If you've played any like first-person shooter type games, like a lot of the movement and things are very similar. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's just kind of how the pledge manager approach for us works. I know other companies do it differently, but that's that's the way that we've. It, I believe it gives everybody the most amount of time to pay for things because I know we're all on budgets and like right now things are you know things are tight things are super tight with inflation and the value of dollars going all over the place so we want to give people the most opportunity they can to get in while they still can um, cool I mean that was everything I wanted to talk about today so I actually uh, I am going to I'm going to hit my 15 minute self timer. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, looking forward to chat with you guys tomorrow about uh, what our stretch goal is going to be. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. See you out there. Bye.